Hello, Las Vegas. My name is Chris Nichols. I'm a writer and a preservationist in Los Angeles. I've been working to preserve historic mid-century buildings for almost 30 years. Um, and in 2007, I wrote this book, The Leisure Architecture of Wayne McAllister, um, because we were trying to save a Wayne McAllister building in Los Angeles, a Bob's Big Boy restaurant from 1949. And somebody said, well, you know, this architect is still around. You should go meet him, and you should, um, you know, hear his story and how this came about. And we did, and he sort of um, explained his great history in gambling and hotels and the restaurants and nightclubs from Los Angeles to Las Vegas to Tijuana to uh, all over the place. And it was a great story, and we did an exhibition and eventually wrote this great book about the guy. So check it out. Um, now that my plug is out of the way, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my library and some of my favorite Las Vegas related and mid-century related books that I think would be a great thing to have in any library for someone that loves this stuff. And I think that um, I just pulled out a few that I thought were interesting and that you might want to take a look for. And um, some of them date back 40, 50 years. Some of them are, are brand new. So if you um, want to build a nice Las Vegas modernism bookshelf, these are a few that you might consider adding. Of course, the number one most important thing uh, on anybody that loves mid-century commercial architecture bookshelf is Alan Hess's book, Googie. And this is the 2005 edition. You can also, I keep it very handy, pick up the 1980s edition. Uh, which is how I first learned about all this stuff when I was in high school. Um, I got Alan Hess's book and went and took the tour in the back and um, got to see all the great buildings around Los Angeles in the Googie style. Um, you know, if you're not familiar with it, it's the futuristic space age style that includes car washes, bowling centers, coffee shops, and all kinds of great locations. It's mostly about Los Angeles, but there's a great chapter on Las Vegas. And when McAllister is in there, and a member of our friends Martin Stern and other great architects that helped to invent Las Vegas. So you definitely need to get Alan's book. He has um, spoken about this kind of architecture for more than 30 years, toured, lectured, has dozens of books, and he's a key person to know if you're looking at um, any of these kinds of buildings. And he's influenced, you know, a generation of us that study it. Um, in 1993, he put out a, uh, I think this was his second book, Viva Las Vegas, by Alan Hess, which you definitely need to have as well. This one included a, um, a little map, and I love maps, and one of the first things that, um, it was one of the first books I ever saw that sort of laid it all out in a very simple and easy to understand way, you know, here's where they were, here's what they were. And really, at the time, it was, it was almost impossible to get this information, you know, pre-internet age and post-first-hand knowledge age, you know. Um, so I, I didn't get to see most of these things because they were disappearing. Um, I did get to go to the Sands Hotel at the end, and I um, stayed in the pool. I put my feet in the pool. I wasn't a guest, but I put my feet in the pool and sat there until the security guards took me away. Um, I had to experience the, the last five minutes of the sands. And I got to do that at a couple of the hotels, the great mid-century classics like the Dunes and the Stardust and a few that were still sort of around. And, um, you know, you'd have a little bit of archaeology digging up the original parts of it um, that were still there. Um, you know, and Alan's book goes back to the Meadows Club, goes back to the 30s. But really, it's about the, um, you know, the 50s high style sort of stuff that we all love so much who are into this sort of thing. Um, definitely, you need to pick up Alan's book. It's, it's, uh, both of his books are just key, foundational things to have in your library, if you don't already. And, you know, prior to Alan, I mean, um, there were so few people that, that took this seriously that really studied it, that really tried to explain it, and not to a, um, an audience of people that, um, you know, were in the business, you know, or that were in the, the sign business, or in the, or, or architects, or, you know, because um, 
you know, of course, there's the, the, the trade magazines of time are great to try to, um, you know, pick out elements of this stuff and try to understand it. But it's always kind of uh, skewed to builders and architects and not certainly not to fans and not to um, the more casual reader. So, um, the, you know, Alan was one of the first people. But way back in, like, 1972, maybe? Um... The uh, Robert Venturi and Denise Scott Brown did their uh, exhibition and their book, Learning from Las Vegas, which kind of takes the um, landscape apart and rebuilds it in interesting ways and kind of helps you try to sort of read the strip, you know, and read these buildings and read these signs and kind of um, breaks it down real simply to sort of see, you know, what's at different levels. Um, what's at different distances, and, you know, here's a low, glittering, dark, enclosed, maze, alcove, you know, and trying to kind of explain the, the base elements of what we were looking at, because nobody really understood what it was, and nobody, you know, really kind of um, appreciated it as art and architecture um, as much before this book. Of course, there's the opening credits of the Elvis Presley film, Viva Las Vegas, which you should stop in YouTube right now if you haven't seen that. But, you know, to appreciate um, this moment, you know, because really before the 1950s, it's, it's, it's cowboys and, 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 and dirt for the most part. You know, there's a couple of hotels, there's the El Rancho Vegas and a couple of things, but and then after it's all disappears. So there's a brief period where you have this explosion in architecture uh, much driven from Los Angeles designers, you know, um, uh, Pereira and Luckman and Wayne McAllister and Martin Stern and the people that came up from here, from L.A., um, and um, were, were called on to do some of these projects. Um, there's a great brand new book. Of course, I'm biased because I love Los Angeles so much. Um, but there's a great new book that is just out by Peter Maruzzi. Greetings from Las Vegas. It's Peter's um, book with Gibbs Smith, and it is a um, largely a, uh, a postcard, and you know, postcard driven, and ephemera driven. It's pretty awesome. Um, big, beautiful color, you know, technicolor images of all this stuff in its heyday, and um, you know, it's really gorgeous. And Pete went to a lot of trouble to present stuff that you haven't seen before. So um, he's really dug up some, some really cool um, artifacts and, and uh, ephemera here, in addition to the postcard collection and the historic photos, you know, renderings and, and just really great stuff. That's a McAllister Hotel, by the way, the Fremont. Um, and, you know, I love Pete's work, and we're friends, and it is just, it's great stuff. You know, he has a great um, postcard book on, uh, on Palm Springs as well. And you might want to check out his um, architectural history of, of Havana, Havana before Castro. Um, these, these sort of uh, spots, these, these, these entertainment uh, destinations, you know, these, these um, resorts and, and sort of luxury spots uh, that had the money and the interest and the, um, you know, ability to create these beautiful places. Um, of course, in Las Vegas, you know, much of it is financed by uh, these fellas. Um, and doing the McAllister book, I had to dig in um, to these histories of these sort of uh, sorted folks that I'm not, oh, that I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not the expert on these guys, but, you know, I, Wayne would drop all these names and the Cleveland gang and the purple such and such, and, and uh, you know, I couldn't keep up with it, um, so I had to try to sort of dig in and, and try to figure out who they were. I recently visited the, the Mob Museum back in uh, November of last year, and it was fantastic. What a great thing you guys have up there. Um, I really enjoyed it, and I, I mean, it, it was so, my favorite thing there, we're seeing the, uh, the personal artifacts from these folks, the, um, the Mo Dalitz, uh, cigarette case or sunglasses or something, like, some of that stuff was really, really interesting, 
to feel a real um, connection to reality, to real people and time, because, you know, it's very familiar. Those objects seem familiar to me in, in studying this period, and I'm a collector, too, so I kind of thought, ooh, that's a neat cigarette case. Um, I'd like to have that in my collection, <laughs> but it was um, it was really great to uh, to be in that to be in that place and and that simulated courtroom. Um, Favre comes up in all these books. So here's when the mob ran Las Vegas by Stephen Fisher, Steve Fisher, and here's uh, players, the men who made Las Vegas, Jack Sheehan, and actually um, might be another one of those mobster books floating around. But, you know, I was trying to sort of make sense of who these characters were that, that Wayne kept talking about. Um, and a real basic history, you know, earlier, I think, short history of Las Vegas, uh, Barbara Land and Merrick Land. Um, I had to kind of uh, understand what was going on there and, and, and try to appreciate more than the, the period that I um, am kind of obsessed with. So I had to sort of uh, pull out and look at some of the earlier material. Um, very, uh, this is the Casino Resort on the Las Vegas Strip and beyond, Suburban Xanadu. Um, another one that I used in that, and you can see this one still has the uh, tabs in it from you know, years ago. And I was trying to just sort of get a baseline understanding of Las Vegas, and that's what these are, that's what these are good for. Um, but you know, you're going to this thing and you live there, maybe you probably, maybe you know a lot of this already. You know, I I um I didn't. I know Los Angeles history. I know the missions, and I know the water, and I know our our, you know, the way that things happen here. Um, you know, and I'm sure there's some similarities um with what happened there. Um, this was interesting. This is a, a 1950s book, um, Las Vegas, Playtown, USA, by a couple of ladies that lived in Virginia City, Catherine Hillier and Catherine Best. And we're friends with um, Lucius Beebe. He's a real character out there. And um, this is pretty interesting. It's a real, like, kind of like a uh, columnist kind of view of, of early Las Vegas and the characters and the situations, the people there. And from a, you know, I'm, I'm thinking this is uh, gossipy, but it's more about the people on the ground and the, like, reality of living there at the time. Back in 1993, I think, I went to a sign convention. The first and only time I've ever been to a sign convention um, in Las Vegas at the convention center there. And I think it was 93 because um, I have this newsletter from April of 93 for Sign Business Magazine with the Hard Rock sign, which I saw has been restored and relit at the, um, at the Neon Museum there. So congratulations, guys, on that one. That's... That's pretty incredible, and we have a we have our museum of neon art here. But man, that yard, going out in that yard, wandering amongst all the it's very emotional. Wandering amongst all the you know great fallen giants, the great dinosaurs of a lost civilization. It's really moving, and um, I'm really impressed with what's happened out there with that museum. It's um, pretty fantastic. Um, but when I was out there, I met a fellow named Charles Barnard, who was a sign designer in the 60s and maybe earlier, and he did this great book, The Magic Sign, which is a, a must-have if you love um, neon, and it's filled with the greatest illustrations, renderings um, of all the classic signs, but what's also neat is it goes into the... 60s and 70s, so it has like um, proposals for things that maybe didn't happen. It's also got these inside pictures of like the Stardust being built. Look at that. Inside the shop. That's great. And and seeing um, these big letters and pieces dwarfing people. Model. You know, it's just great. I I highly recommend this one because it's a funny thing in that, you know, it, it's not a social history or a cultural history. It's more like a, um, a corporate history of these companies that created these spectaculars and really, really rare and hard-to-find beautiful photos of 
the signs when they were young and fresh and new and brilliant. And um, I can't recommend this one enough. Uh, these renderings, even, you know, they're so great and rich. And I mean, they're just meant to convince you to spend millions of dollars. So they got to be good, you know? And um, yeah, as, the, as a casino owner, you know, should I, should I pay for that new marquee or, you know, or hire 100 people? Look at this. The sands that didn't happen. It's, it's absolutely fantastic, and I, I can't recommend this one enough. The Magic Sign by Charles Bernard. It's a great one. And, you know, when I was out there, I, um, I, was, I was with Peter Maruzzi, who wrote the, um, the new Las Vegas um, um, Greetings from Las Vegas book. And uh, we were able to talk our way into the uh, Young Electric Sign Company Boneyard back before it was a museum. Um, and they were kind enough to let us look around. And they had, um, they had produced this great book, A Legacy in Light. It's a booklet. It's pretty thin. But it's, um, it's a history of that one company. It's another corporate history, which is something you don't always think is the first place to go when you're looking for this stuff. But great stuff in here, um, including, again, that hard rock sign. So it goes to that. It goes to that age. But it goes back to the Circus Circus and to the uh, stuff in Reno and great photos and great stories about the family behind this company, which is still one of the biggest in the country. Um, and, you know, like the, the dust. Look at that thing. You know, it's full of great pictures like that, and and uh, it's fairly simple, but um, and straightforward. But it tells you about the family. And here's a great side by side of a before and after sort of shot of, you know, um, like wartime Vegas, just post war Vegas, and then like, you know, what it turned into a few years later. Thanks for letting me look around the book there. Um, but yeah, it's uh, a legacy of light, the history of the Young Electric Sign Company, and I think that it's something that you should check it out, because of course, the signage of Las Vegas, historically, almost all gone from that, from that prime period there, um, you know, is as key as the architecture, is, key, is as key as any element of it. And it's so wild and kinetic and exciting and brilliant and beautiful that you have to just stop. I mean, that's the whole point of it, right? You, you stop, it, it makes you stop and pull into the place, which is the, the effect of all great commercial modern architecture, you know, from uh, the arches of McDonald's to a motel arrow, something that's telling you where to go and where to stop and where to spend your money and where to spend the night, and where to get a hamburger. And, I mean, that's, that's the whole thing in a nutshell, you know, um, for signage or for, um, you know, a line that catches your eye as you're driving by, a roof line. Think, think, of, um, think of that Bob's Big Boy in North Las Vegas, or, see, or think of a, an early McDonald's with the slanted roof and the arches. Um, there's no other roof like that. And so every roof you see is doing this, and then that one does this, or you know, or a Denny's roof from the 60s will do the same thing. Um, and it catches your eye and pulls you in. So that's why they are so effective, because they're so bright and colorful and brilliant. And, and uh, talking about bright and colorful and brilliant, our friend, uh, our friend Charles Phoenix and Fred Baston wrote Fabulous Las Vegas in the 50s, maybe 15 years ago. And Charles is, a, is an old friend, and he, um, he's done these live comedy shows in Vegas where he um, narrates other people's slides. Other, you know, like he'll go to an estate sale and collect the slides of the deceased and then pu puts them into a, uh, into a, into a, like a, a, a comedy show. I guess, but he sort of, it sounds, it's irreverent, but it's not disrespectful. It's, um... It's fun. I mean, he, he talks about the... He's never been to one of his shows. you got to go check him out when he's in your town next. But he um, will take found slides, like this one here of the horseshoe, you know, 
and um, sort of explain what that person's doing in a, in a very comedic way. This one is filled with great illustrations from brochures and handout stuff. But like, look at this thing. Hotel scene here. Um, and, you know, he's very witty, and it's, it's a fun read. Um, but it's, uh, it's filled with uh, historic photos and artifacts and ephemera, but also some of those slides that he, that he found that he's so good at. Look at this, because this stuff, you know, how would that exist? street scene like that, unless some tourist shot it, and then put it in their little slide box for decades, and then died, and then he found it. So, anyway, he's uncovered some great material and turned it into a career, going around telling funny stories about other people's slides. Anyway, Charles Phoenix, check him out if you don't already know his work. And here's one of his books. He must have ten books by now. Um, with a similar sort of theme, and they're all very loud and brilliant and bright. So be prepared, like a like a Las Vegas sign. They're gonna they're gonna catch your attention and stop you and make you pay attention. <laughs> um, and uh, here's something interesting: Mike Weatherford's Cult Vegas. Have you seen this one? This one ha I really love because it's full of um, entertainment, and you know the the great cultural history of Las Vegas in the 50s and 60s. Um, for me, uh, is the is the showrooms and the lounges and the entertainers, and my gosh, um, this book is filled with um, with your with your with your Tom Joneses and your Elvis Presleys, but also your Buddy Grecos and your Mary Kay trios and your um, your lounge acts. I got to see the Treniers at the end of their performing life there. Uh, oh, Rickles is in here and um, Esquivel. It's just great. <laughs> cookie jar in the 90s um, but it is uh, it is filled with these oh look, gosh look at this the uh, the goofers at the Sahara in 1959 yeah anyway it's got great stories about the uh, the lounges and pretty Bell and his bellboys and it's fun I really uh, I really enjoyed this one uh, just for sort of taking you backstage, taking you into these showrooms, taking you around to, um, to this lost age. I, gosh, I remember I saw Keely Smith at the Sands. Doesn't that sound ridiculous in 2020? I mean, I, I'm in my 40s. I saw Keely Smith at the Sands. Um, you know, that it was kind of here until, you know, not that long ago, says the middle-aged guy. Uh, but, you know, um, I remember she, uh, she, she stood up and she said, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce my close personal friend in the audience, Mr. Jack Jones. And he got up and did a little bow. What a Vegas moment that was. I really, I really enjoyed it <laughs> tremendously. Um, you know, nothing like a good time machine moment to, to get me uh, losing my mind a little bit. Um, and one of the best was near the end of the Stardust. And I mean, gosh, was it only like 10, 12 years ago? Something like that? It hasn't been gone that long, has it? I, I, I tell you. Um, Stardust, you know, of course the sign had been modified and was kind of Helvetica eyes, but um, still, a lot of, still a lot of it there. I mean, the, the sort of the boxcar shapes of the wings and, um, you know, archaeology, you know, and that's kind of what we had in the 90s and the 2000s was the archaeology of Las Vegas. Um, you know, I remember at the at the Sahara in the '90s, there was still a little, there was still the Donna Beachcomber, which was amazing. Um, but there were little elements. I remember there was a mosaic art sculpture, like a great '50s, '60s mosaic art like um, moment, just kind of hiding in a hallway. You know, uh, one corner that didn't get remodeled, and that's kind of what I don't see anymore is that last little corner from the from the golden age. Um, when you look around, they've done a pretty good job of wiping out any, any trace elements of that in most of these places. But at the end of the Stardust, I picked up the souvenir um, book, The Stardust of Yesterday by Heidi Knapp Rinella. You know, there's a little metallic cover there. And this is great. This, for people that love this, um, you know, ephemera and bits of the hotel, um, and this has got some great tiki stuff in it from the Aku Aku. 
at the Stardust, and room interiors from the 60s, and I'm getting a lot of that stuff. Can you see it? Anyway, it's, um, it's great. I feel like it's um, a really great, you know, like drawer in the office, you know, that didn't get, even though I'm sure they went to great, great trouble to pull this all together, but, you know, you kind of hope there's going to be a drawer in the office full of, like, souvenir fans like this, and elements from the Aku Aku. Um, as if the hotel had been keeping a scrapbook all these years. It's really, it's, it's just great stuff that you never see anywhere. You know? Dig it. I just really, I love it. It's also got some of the entertainment and some of the um, cultural elements to it. Somebody, who's this, who's this doing Kung Fu? There's Muhammad Ali boxing. Um, you know, it's Chuck Norris and Debbie Reynolds doing Kung Fu. Thank you, Las Vegas. Um, I just, you know, it's a really fun visit to this place. Of course, this is kind of what it looked like you know, in the sort of transitional phase when they were trying to hide a little bit of that exuberance and tone it down a little bit. I don't know where this toning it down a little bit thing came from. We did it. We're, 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 we did it as much as anybody here in Los Angeles, but... It, uh, it's just a, it's a really neat, um, oh, here's their lounge section. Here's Esquivel at the Stardust. Come on. Get a load of that. Yeah. Anyway, this is a fantastic look, a deep dive into one property, and I really love it. It's just, uh, the Siegfried and Roy spread. Ah. <laughs> anyway, check it out. The Stardust of Yesterday. I don't know how, uh, I mean, I bought this at the hotel. I don't, I haven't looked to see how available or unavailable some of this stuff is. It might be a little hard to find, but look for it. Something that wasn't hard to find, it was on the clearance shelf, was this guy here. Las Vegas photographs by Santi Vasali. Here's my, I gotta get rid of this. But... <laughs> <laughs> this one is interesting because it's sort of like uh, he's an Italian photographer who went to Vegas in 90s, early 2000s maybe, and shot these kind of, um, 1996, and shot these sort of scenes like uh, like human interest stuff, you know, and and some of the things that, that used to get, you know, lumped into the, hey, only in Las Vegas, you know, only in whatever, these kind of like, oh... The Boneyard, it's a beautiful picture of the Boneyard, but the kind of, you know, it's kind of funny. I mean, it's like, I don't know, the, the Excalibur Oz seems a little absurd in our 2020 eyes. Like, how did that happen? And um, although it's great and cool and it should be there, but, you know, like uh, crazy Americans kind of like, oh, what is this? You know, and maybe the... Uh, sophisticated Italian audience that he was trying to reach. I don't know. Maybe they wouldn't appreciate it as much as the graves of the, graves of the, you know, who is this? Sonny Liston. Graves of Sonny Liston and Red Fox. Okay. You know, it's interesting. And it's sort of like, uh, and it's just some, you know, pretty pictures of colorful things. It's an interesting one that, um, you know, more in the uh, outsider looking in, uh, fine art, uh, you know, vein. Um, but, you know, as historians, there's all kinds of great little elements like, um, you know, bits of signage and bits of pieces of, of buildings that are, that are gone now. Like, and where is this crazy postmodern looking thing, you know? What happened to that? Should we be working on that? Should we look into that? Anyway, neat. Stuff I didn't know. Later stuff. Check it out. The guy's name is Santi Vesali. Introduction by Wayne Newton. So, probably why I picked it up, honestly. Here's another one of these kind of, you know, this is, well, I mean, this, this one, actually, this one is the um, picturing Las Vegas, Linda Chase. Uh, it's got this nice die-cut cover. But again, another, another kind of, um, you know, photo-driven, kind of fun book with a light history, with some stuff I've seen before, but it's still great. And, um, you know, I, 
I uh, I appreciate it. It's um, you know, sex, politics, and other crimes. It's kind of more broad, and then. Uh, than some of the ones that I really love that are kind of deep dives, like the like the Magic Sign or the Stardust book. Um, it's a little broader, but you know your library should have it because it's got um, it's got some great social stories and it's got some great um, it's got some great backstage kind of stuff. You know, it's pretty neat. Picturing Las Vegas. This one was a PBS um, American Experience documentary. The companion book, Las Vegas and Unconventional History, uh, by Michelle Ferrari, with Stephen Ives. This is a, um, you know, this is kind of like a, I don't want to say the textbook, but it's more like, it's mostly, it's the most textbook-like one we have here, which kind of tells the, you know, story from A to Z, and has kind of, um, you know, every uh, every element gets a moment. You know, every equal equal opportunity for uh, all the different aspects of Las Vegas history. Here's a shot of the Greenfield Jungle, which is another one that I might recommend. I have a copy. I couldn't find it. I have a little tiny paperback from 1964 of this book that I found in Wayne McAllister's house. Um, after he passed away, I went through his collection and, and pulled out some things, and I got his copy of uh, The Greenfield Jungle, and he's in it. So he's mentioned in this, you know, if you don't know, it's the uh, Ed Reed, R-E-I-D is the author, and Ovid Damaris, D-E-M-A-R-I-S. The shocking documented truth about Las Vegas home from the first time in this controversial bestseller that blasts the lid off the fabulous entertainment capital of the world and lays bare... A corrupt jungle of iniquity. Anyway, it's a uh, it's the first book that sort of says, you know, oh, there are some gangsters involved in all this, and um, Wayne shows up in there because he had points in the uh, in the sands, and so he's mentioned in that book, and you know, he was still so um, shy about talking about that stuff, even in the '90s. Um, he would he he would uh, really keep from spilling anything. He didn't he didn't want those long dead gangsters coming to come and knocking on his door. So I didn't get a lot of dirt out of him, but <laughs> you know, um, not that I was looking for it, but that he um, had to deal with those guys, and he you know, and he had good things to say about all of them. Oh yeah, so and so talked like he had marbles in his mouth, but he was a smart guy. You know, <laughs> he was. That's how Wayne would uh, describe some of the characters that he was forced to deal with. Um, so, you know, there's a, a, a brief look. Um, a couple more that I, I don't really, I haven't really spent a lot of time with. Viva Vegas by Paul Raleigh. Um, you might look into that one. I honestly don't remember much about it. Uh, it's got like a tribute to Wilbur Clark in it. That was kind of interesting. Viva Vegas. Um... And, you know, this pamphlet I picked up in the 90s, A Brief Look at Historic Las Vegas. Um, this one by Ron Puckett and Kenneth Davies. This one was interesting because it's hard to throw your mind back sometimes to the pre-internet time when you just couldn't find this stuff anywhere, you know, and you had to kind of, like, these stories, these photos didn't exist. And this is almost like a zine, you know, for underground bands or something. Um, to finally to see pictures of, of historic Las Vegas was like tracking that down back then. Although if you don't know what I'm talking about, you wouldn't know what a, you didn't, wouldn't know what a zine was. I don't know how old is everybody here. Um, oh wait, here's one more that I forgot to mention. No, we've got that one. We've got this one. All right. Well, I think we went through most of them. Maybe there's a couple that I held back. But I mean, uh, you know, I have a, I have a, uh, I got a lot of Vegas books. I got a lot of. Architectural history books. I got a lot of Los Angeles books, um, and I just wanted to share. And of course, the first one you should grab is *The Leisure Architecture of Wayne McAllister* by me. And check me out um, on Instagram, uh, where I am uh, Nixols N I X O L S uh, N I X O L S, and I'm on Twitter and stuff. And um, 
you know, if you want to keep up on what's happening in Los Angeles and you want to see, um, you know, history of, of uh, this, a lot of the same sort of idea that was happening here, read my articles in Los Angeles Magazine, where I'm senior editor. Um, check out LAMag.com, where I write stories. Um, and uh, I write a, a column in Los Angeles Magazine called Ask Chris, where I answer questions from readers about history. Um, you know, it's mostly Los Angeles questions, but if you uh, travel here, you've seen something here you want to know about, that's what I do. I answer those questions. What's that strange thing I saw in the corner? Or how, how come you can't do this in the city? Um, and so that's kind of, uh, that's my shtick at the magazine. And, and of course, anything historical I, I, I tackle. Uh, so I hope to be back in Las Vegas when we can travel again. I hope to, um, you know, see some of the, so I, I, I saw them, I've, I, I've, saw, I've seen some restoration of some historic places there. I saw the Morelli House, which was fantastic. I'd love to see more. i love to come to Home in History. Um, and so uh, I hope I will. And I hope I'll be able to come see you for the uh, 2021 Home in History. And thank you for um, visiting with me in my library. And um, I hope that you like those books and that they, um, you know, they start a good um, collection for you. And that maybe you um, get, you know, get overwhelmed by them like I am. <laughs> and they're closing in on you. I got a lot of books. Don't get, don't get as many books as I have. But get those books. And um, check them out at your library or, or buy them. And thank you very much for spending some time with me. Okay. See you later.